So in my notebook today, I'm going to write the date, which the date is 11. Well, I want you to write the date, actually, and then we're going to be working on dividing with decimals. And this is objective 5 MBT 7. Make sure you update your table of contents with that information. We're going to divide with decimals again, and this is 5 MBT 7. And we're going to be using the day 73 pages that you put into your homework folder. Okay. So we're going to look at dividing decimals page first, okay? And it says here on in the problem number one, the two watermelons weigh one and forty-eight hundredth pounds. How much does each watermelon weigh? So I'm going to do cubes down the side. My important numbers are one and forty-eight hundredth pounds and two, which is written in word form, so that means I need to write it in standard form right above the word two. I'm going to underline how much does each watermelon weigh. I'm going to box each. Okay. And now I get to evaluate what I need to do. I have two watermelons and together they weigh this much. I want to know how much separately they weigh. So I'm going to take the total weight, 1 and 48 hundredths, and divide it by 2. Now I'm going to make an estimate. I know since this is a decimal divided by a whole number, my answer has to be a decimal number. So my estimate here is that my answer will be a decimal less than 1 and 48 hundredths. And I know 1 and 48 hundredths would be really close to like 1 and 5 tenths. And 1 and 5 tenths is like saying 15 tenths. So it should be close. If I take 15 tenths and put it into two groups, I get, uh, I get 75 hundredths. So it should be close to 0 and 75 hundredths. Okay. Now I'm going to actually solve this problem in my notebook. So I'm going to write number one in my notebook under my title, and I'm going to do this equation the way we showed you, I showed you in class. So two is my divisor, one and forty-eight hundredths is my dividend. I know two will not fit into one whole, so I'm going to think two will go into fourteen. 2 times what is close to 14? Well, 2 times 7 is close to 14. 2 times 7 is 14. So I subtract and get 0 left over. I bring down my 8. 2 will go into 8 holes 4 times because 2 times 4 equals 8. So I subtract 8, and I'm done with the problem. My decimal just goes right back up here. So my answer is 0 and 74 hundredths. So when I look right here, 0 and 74 hundredths. Now I said that it would be less than 1 and 48 hundredths and it would be close to 0 and 75 hundredths. This answer is correct. So my answer is correct because 0 and 74 hundredths is less than 1 and 48 hundredths. And I also know that it's correct because 0 and 74 hundredths is close to 0 and 75 hundredths. So my esti estimate and my answer are, are backing each other up. They're, they're uh, making each other true. All right, number two. At the grocery store, the total cost of the candy was zero and 78 hundredths, or zero, or excuse me, zero dollars and 78 cents. James bought six pieces of candy. How much did each piece of candy cost? So I want to know, I want to box the word each. 
okay? I want to box the word total. And I want to box the word pieces. So his total cost was zero and 78 hundreds. And he was able, with that much money, with 78 cents, or zero and 78 hundreds, he was able to get six pieces of candy. I want to know how much each piece individually cost. So I'm going to take my total, 0 and 78 hundredths, or 78 cents, and I'm going to divide it by 6 holes. If I estimate here, my answer should be a decimal smaller than 0 and 78 hundredths. And if I think about it, six I know goes into seven one time, so it should be around, so it should be close to at least zero and eleven hundreds, because six will go into seven one time, six will go into eight one time, so it's probably close to around zero and eleven hundreds. If I add zero and eleven hundreds six times, I'm going to get close to my total that I need. Okay. Now we're going to solve again in our actual notebooks. So I'm going to look at my notebook and I'm going to write number two in my notebook. And I have six as my divisor and zero and 78 hundredths as my dividend. So six won't go into zero, but it will go into seven. Six will go into seven one time. So I'm gonna subtract six. Now notice I don't have anything to subtract here, but zero would just mean zero down here. So six minus seven is one, and I'm not gonna worry about this zero because it doesn't mean anything. It's not worth any value, okay? And I'm gonna bring down my eight. I know six will go into 18 three times. So I'm gonna put my three up here and six times that three is 18. So I'm gonna subtract 18 and I get zero left over. So I'm gonna do, 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 put my decimal right up here and my answer is zero and 13 hundredths. So my answer here is zero and 13 hundredths. Well, when I look at my estimate and I look at my actual answer, my answer is correct. because 0 and 13 hundredths is less than 0 and 78 hundredths and 0 and 13 hundredths is close to 0 and 11 hundredths. Okay, so my estimate is, is helping me to realize that my answer is probably correct. I did my math correctly. All right. Let's look at number three. And I did do cubes for this problem, I just didn't write it out. I did it as I was following along with the problem. All right, so I'll write it out over here. So Marcus was training for his triathlon. Tri meaning three, so we're gonna be um, doing something with the number three there, but that's pretty cool, triathlon. Um, he runs seven and eight tenth miles, so there's an important number, each morning. If he runs three laps, I put a three there to because it's in word form. If he runs three laps around his neighborhood each morning, how far is each lap around his neighborhood? Hmm. All right. How far is each lap around his neighborhood is my question. And box my key action words. Um, laps is a key action word. Okay. And then how far is each lap? So what this is saying is if, he, if his neighborhood's here, he's running one lap, two laps, three laps around his neighborhood, and the total that all three of those, uh, the total miles for all three of those laps is seven and eight tenths. So I need to take my total and divide it by three to figure out how much just one lap is or how much each lap is. So I'm gonna take seven and eight tenths and divide it by three holes. My estimate. I know my answer will be a decimal less than seven and eight tenths. 
And if I look, I know three will go into seven at least two times. So I know my answer will be close to two holes. And that's okay because two holes is less than seven and eight tenths, okay? So it's gonna be close to two holes, but it's also gonna have a decimal with it because I know my answer has to be a decimal number. So I'm gonna go back to my notebook. I'm gonna write number three. And I'm gonna solve seven and eight tenths divided by three. So three is my divisor, seven and eight tenths is my dividend. So three will go into seven two times. Three times two is six, so I subtract six and I have one left over and I bring down my eight. Three will go into 18 six times. So I'm gonna put my six up here. Three times six is 18. Zero left over, I just put my decimal up here. So my answer is two and six tenths. So here I'm gonna write two holes, six tenths. And I know that this is correct because two holes and six tenths is less than seven holes and eight tenths and it is close to the number two. So what I said in my estimate matches with what I'm saying in my answer. All right, let's look at number four. Jane saved all the change her dad gave her for five days in order to buy a new basketball card. If the card costs $2.90, how much does her dad need to give her each day so she can buy the card after five days? So I'm gonna write cubes down the side. So Jane saved all the change her dad gave her for five days, there's a number right there that's important, to buy a new basketball card. If the card costs $2.90, how much does her dad need to give her each day so she can, earn, so she can buy the card after five days? So how much does her dad need to give her each day so she can buy the card after five days? Box, each day, okay? How much, so I know my answer is gonna be dealing with money, okay? And um, saved, so she saved this money. So there's five days, I'm gonna come down here and write the number five, so I have that in standard form and then here $2.90. So I, I know the total cost for the card, the total amount she needs to save is $2.90, and we have five days to save that much. So if we're trying to figure out how much for each day, I'm gonna take $2.90 and divide it by five, okay? I want you to write an estimate, you can pause the video, and I want you to write an estimate statement for this problem. Pause the video and write an estimate statement for this problem, okay? And we're gonna work on number four in our notebook. $2.90 divided by five. So five is my divisor, $2.90 is my dividend. Five can't go into two, but it can go into 29. Five goes into 29 five times. So I subtract, five times five is 25, I subtract 25 and I get four left over. Bring down my zero. Five will go into 40 eight times. So I'm going to bring up my decimal right here, 0 and 58 hundredths, or 0 and 58 cents. $0.58 is my answer. That's how much dad would have to give her each day. Because 5 times 8, I didn't finish the problem, I'm sorry. 5 times 8 is 40, so I end up with 0 here. All right, so my answer is 0 and 58 hundredths. You should have paused the video, written your estimate statement. Now I want you to pause the video and write why your answer is correct based on what you said in your estimate statement, just like we did for scenario one, it's in, or excuse me, for number one and two. All right, let's look at number five. I'm gonna do cubes down the side. Murphy Elementary Environment Club planted a tree four years ago in front of the school. If the tree measures six and 24 hundredths feet, how many feet did it grow each year? So I'm gonna circle my four years I'm going to circle how much it measures today, and it wants to know how many feet did it grow each year, okay? And this was years ago, so it's four years ago in the past, and it's grown this much in that four-year time period, and it wants to know how much did it grow year one, year two, year three, and year four. So I'm going to take six and 24 hundredths and divide it by four. I want you to pause the video, write your estimate statement. 
pause the video and write your estimate statement. How many feet do you would we estimate that it did grow each year? Okay. Now in our notebooks, we're going to solve number five. So we have six and twenty-four hundredths divided by four. So four is my divisor, goes on the outside. Six and twenty-four hundredths is my dividend. Four will go into six one time without going over. So it's four times one is four, so I subtract four, have two left over. Bring down my two here. Four will go into 22 five times without going over. Five times four is 20, so I subtract 20 and I have two left over. Bring down my four. Four will go into 24 six times, subtract 24 and I have zero left over. So I bring up my decimal here. My answer is one and 56 hundredths. So it grew one and 56 hundred feet per year. Okay. I want you to pause and write your um, statement about why your answer is reasonable based on your estimate statement and what you actually got. How do those two help confirm that your answer is right? Okay, you'll pause the video and write that. I would like for you as to show me, to earn at least, you can earn seven tickets tomorrow. If you can come in and show me that you've completed one of these three problems on the homework page and you've done all the steps that we worked through in the example problems. So seven tickets tomorrow if you've completed one of these three homework pages, homework problems, and you can show it to me with your stuff glued into your math notebook. All right, see you guys tomorrow.